Okay, how come the economy can always go back to the potential output, which is something we pointed out here based on the idea from monetarist uh, economics. Okay, so this is what we are going to find out in this video. And hopefully by watching this video, you can understand the concept simply. All right, so let's do it. Um, so before we start the whole explanation, I'm just gonna give you one basic scenario and you will um, understand it eventually. Okay, so let's just say uh, because of something happened to uh, one of the AD components and uh, your AD now has been increased. All right, so because of that, of course, we need to draw another AD curve. So we have AD2 right here. Uh, it's always a good habit that uh, we all try to finish uh, the labels once we have got, um, you know, like different curves in the diagram. So, you know, now we have got uh, a new label for the price level, P2, and then we have got a new label for our real output. So we just, let's say uh, Y1 then, okay? All right, and there's an increase in AD, okay? Increase in AD, AD increase from AD1 to AD2. All right, so now we need to realize what will happen if that is the case. All right, so to the firms, I think we all agree, firms will be happy, right? Because right now, people, they're trying to buy more goods and services from you. And therefore, hey, you will be willing to produce more for them. And eventually, output is gonna go up. Output is gonna go up, right? And when you look at the diagram, okay, it's going up from YP, which is your initial position in our economy, all right? So this is what we were assuming, okay? So, you know, initially we were here, all right? When you look at this yellow dot here, all right, and uh, which means that originally we were already at a very optimal level uh, of output. But now because of the increase in AD, we are moving up from this point, we call that point A, to point B. Point B right here. Yes. And, um, you know, because of that, real output is increasing from YP to Y1. Yes, okay, so that's one part of it. And we cannot ignore, if that is the case, something will also happen to our price level as well. So when you look at the price level, price level is also increasing from P1 to P2. Okay, all right, but here's a tricky part about price level. Uh, and is that normally when we talk about price level, we talk about inflation, right? But in inflation, this thing is a very uh, you know, tricky item uh, to people. And I would say inflation is slower to realize. So what does it mean by that? Is that imagine when you, when you go out there and you try to consume, do you think people will tell you, like every time, uh, when the price level uh, has been changed, they would give you like a notice, they would inform you in any way? Well, I don't think so, okay? And, and which means it, it is something that it takes time for people to realize. It's not like that people, they would tell you proactively, okay? So if you bear this mindset with you, then you can realize to the workers, okay, now to the workers. So the workers, even though when you look at the diagram, the price level has been increased, but to the workers or to people in general, so people in general, let's say people in general. Oops, let's give a second here. People in general, okay. The price level is still at P1, all right? This is how they, you know, uh, 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 realize, okay, right now, because they don't even know the price level has been increased, all right? And therefore, from this idea here, you can also explain how come your SRAS 
is moving up along the curve. Remember the factor that will um, you know uh, 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 affect the SRAS, and that is basically you know what we learned before the sticky wages. Okay, and uh, when people they don't realize, okay, prices are increasing, they would be happy with their current wages, and that's why they're not gonna do do anything. They'll be happy working at the same salary, and this is what we are talking about right now. Okay, all right. But when you look at this timeline here, all right, this timeline right here, when time goes by, something will happen. All right. Something will happen when time goes by, and eventually, the workers, which means you know the people in general, they will realize okay, price level has been increased. And what do you think they would do? Of course, they're gonna be unhappy, right? You know the people. Okay, the workers. They'll be quite unhappy, and they would all say, "Hey, come on." Everything out there, the price has been increased, so they will ask for pay rise for sure when time goes by. All right, so now the time is uh, you know is up here. Okay, all right. So you know they're gonna ask for a pay rise, and of course you know firms yeah you know like uh, in general they do understand that, so they would uh, agree with uh, that and uh, provide pay rise. But because of that, what do you think will happen to the cost of production? Right, I think we all realize like what is what is going to happen, you know, right now. So to the firms, cost of production will be increased, okay, because of uh, you know uh, uh, what the workers they have realized, and also when they have increased. The cost of production to the firms, you you can think about this as well, right? If I would like to earn the same amount of profit, so maybe I would have to increase the price of my goods. Yeah, don't you think? And if that is the case, then when you are a firm and you are trying to get some uh, like ingredients or materials in order to produce your goods, the cost of production will also increase at the same time. So you know, if you put everything together, cost of production. Will increase when time goes by. When people didn't realize the price level has actually been increased. Okay, so if that is the case, something will happen to our diagram as well. All right, because we learn about if cost of production is changing, then our SRAS will be shifted as well. Okay, all right, and in this case. When cost of production is increasing, then we can tell the SRAS is going to shift to the left. To the left, because you know cost has been increased. All right, and if this is the case, then we can find something insightful. Is that look at this. Originally, we were at A, and because of the increase in demand, I mean aggregate demand, we are going to B. Okay, but now when people they realize the change in price level, eventually, because of the shift in SRAS, we are going from point B to, well, ultimately, point C. Okay, all right. So if if I also show you the direction right here, so you can definitely tell when time goes by. All right, this is what you will see. You will actually find, okay, a self correction at the end. A self. Oh, just give me a second. A self correction in the economy. At the end, because look at this, what is gonna happen when we eventually get to point C? Look at your real GDP. Look at your real output. It is going back. All right. If uh, if I put this aside 
for the real GDP. It is going back to YP, which is your potential output. But there is something different about the price level, right? Look at that. At point C, your price level is at P3, which is even higher than P2, okay? So what is the meaning behind this? The meaning behind this is very simple, is that, okay, it's just like what the monitors, they believe, all right? So this part is the most, most important part. So, you know, listen to this. So the monitors, they believe, okay, if there's nothing else, if the economy is already running at a very optimal level, then we shouldn't do anything extra, especially when it comes to government intervention in order to um, change the AD. Because when you look at this self-correction mechanism, you realize when we change the AD from a very optimal level of output, which is point A, okay, eventually we will go back to our you know, potential output but at a higher price level. So what is the point of doing you know, all these? So there's no point of doing this. Uh, and at the same time, all right, it also fulfills what they believe about the long run AS. Because you know, when you think about it, long run AS, we talk about, you know, this vertical line uh, showing that in the long run, disregarding the level of uh, inflation, we will always get back to that potential output. And in this very simple scenario, we get to understand this is how we can come up with the entire uh, uh, you know, procedure uh, to, to get this final result. So hopefully uh, this video is gonna help you understand um, the monitor's idea regarding um, from short run to long run, so that uh, you know more about their mindset. Okay, all right. So you know. Until next time, I'll I'll see you guys later.